right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start. Please take your seats. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Sayyidati wa sadati, assalamu alaikum. Mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue ce soir. Welcome and thank you for joining Brainbox AI's Building Synergies, Decarbonizing the Middle East with Canadian AI event. Tonight we're pleased to bring together leaders from Canadian and Middle Eastern real estate, sustainability, and artificial intelligence. We're here to celebrate Canadian AI deployments and successes that have contributed to decarbonizing real estate in the Emirates. To kick off this event, I'd like to ask our CEO, Sam Ramadori, to please share a few words. Sam? Thank you, Omar. Um, first of all, thank you for everyone um, for being here. We recognize the COP. Uh, it is the third COP we attend, and it is always a chaotic and exciting event, but it's also one that we know is always last minute. It changes, and it's hard to get around. So a big thank you for, for everyone battling the traffic to get here. Um, uh, if you're here, I guess you've maybe heard of Brainbox AI before. We are a Montreal, Canada-based company. Our focus has been to use artificial intelligence to make a difference. Um, we started about seven years ago, and uh, at that time, artificial intelligence was developed, but still very young. And the idea that our CTO, our founder, our inventor, Jean-Simon Venn had was to say, we need to make a difference with the buildings on our planet. The buildings have a particular challenge, uh, unlike, let's say, vehicles that we go to electric vehicles. They have a natural replacement cycle every five, 10 years, 15 years. The buildings are many, they're millions, they're not gonna change, we're only adding to the number of buildings, uh, and so we need to do something scalable to decarbonize them. So the idea of using the new capabilities that artificial intelligence give us and applying them to buildings was the idea at the beginning. And uh, the challenge is, it is a novel technology. What we are applying is autonomous artificial intelligence most of us will recognize the most common application that we see is the, the a, autonomous AI behind the self-driving car. Um, as, you can, as you probably know, there have been billions of dollars investment invested by several companies working towards the self-driving car, but it is a difficult technology and, and it is still being developed. In our case, as I said, we focus on the buildings and applying that technology to make buildings more efficient using AI, which means we're avoiding massive investments or, 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 or tough investments that take a lot of time, applying it in a way that's scalable in buildings all around the world. And we're happy tonight and excited to be showcasing buildings that are here in the city that we've been able to deploy into. Um, as time goes on, I mean, the last year, we're on about the one year anniversary of the, of the, um, the launch of, a, of generative AI by OpenAI about a year ago. And, uh, and so now, when before the concept of artificial intelligence was tough to digest or understand, we're now getting the application of AI on our fingertips through things like chat, GPT, and other platforms. So we're seeing live just how powerful it can be. And so we're quite excited to be pushing that application into the built environment, and we will continue to innovate uh, on that front. 
And so I'll, I'm going to cut it here. I think brevity makes you a very popular speaker, and we want to make sure we get to more exciting speakers that speak about very concrete applications of the technology, especially here in the region. So I'll pass the words back to, to Omar, and we'll get this kicked off. So thank you again. Thank you, Sam. So indeed, being here in Dubai for COP28 speaks to our mission at Brainbox AI. Our mission is to save the planet with AI. It also highlights how climate change is a global challenge which requires the voices of all peoples to be represented and the participation of all of us to ensure success. Knowing this, we've built from day one Brainbox AI to be a global company, and today we're proud to report that we have over 13,000 buildings in over 18 countries that are connected to our technology. We're also a very diverse company. We really value diversity, and we have some statistics to share that uh, I honestly kind of did a maybe a double take when I saw them. So we, in our team, we have 21 languages that are spoken. And in fact, 75% of Brainbox employees speak three or more languages. Sayyidati wa sadati, natasharraf bi tamthil sharikatina huna fi Dubai. Al madin alati tu'addu namudhan namudhajan yatahadda o yuhtada bihi fil istidama. Laqad asbahat al mabani mas'ula an arba'ina fil mi'a min al imbi'athat al karboniya al alamiya. Wa huwa ma yaj'al juhudakum fi tahqiq al istidama akthar ahamiya. إن استضافة دبي لمؤتمر الأمم المتحدة حول تغيير المناخ تبرز دوركم القيادي في هذا المجال نحن ملتزمون بدعم هذه الجهود من خلال تقديم حلول تكنولوجية تساهم في خفض الانبعاثات من المباني نؤمن بأن التعاون بيننا سيساهم في تحقيق مستقبل أكثر استدامة مع التركيز على تقليل البصمة الكربونية للمباني شكرا لكم على هذه الفرصة ونتطلع قدما لشراكة مثمرة ومستدامة. And with that, I would like to welcome a special guest. So we're here with Minister Pierre Fitzgibbon, who is the Quebec Minister of the Economy, Innovation and Energy. So he has a lot going on. But thank you, Pierre, for joining us. Please give me, uh, join me in welcoming him to the stage. Thank you, Omar, and uh, my greetings to uh, a couple of guests here, Sam and Madori, that I've been knowing for a number of years. It makes me proud to be uh, the Quebec Minister of Economy and Innovation because it reflects what we are aiming to. Uh, Omar, also uh, greetings to you and to all of the uh, Brainbox AI employee here with us tonight. Also acknowledge um, Mr. Youssef Shalabi, the, um, obviously the head of operation for um, Al Arbour Group, uh, happy to be here, hosted by uh, your organization. Uh, Mr. Khaled Abbas, the head of uh, Initiative Capital for Urban Development from Egypt, nice to uh, meet with you. And if you don't mind, allow me to uh, use a language, one of your 21 language. I'd like to say a few words also in French. So, um, bonsoir tout le monde et merci à toute l'équipe de Brainbox AI pour uh, l'organisation de cet événement en marge de la COP28. Welcome to all real estate, sustainable development, and AI industry leaders who are with here, uh, here with us tonight. L'intelligence artificielle AI est un domaine en plein essor au Québec auquel je crois énormément. I believe in it because with our strengths in research and innovation, Quebec has become a true global leader in this strategic uh, sector. Depuis plusieurs années, notre gouvernement appuie la recherche dans le domaine et soutient les principaux acteurs qui contribuent à l'essor de l'IA au Québec. Uh, Brainbox AI is a very good example of technology company that propels our ecosystem even further while we can decarbonize our economy. The company has developed a smart solution reducing energy consumption in the carbon footprint in commercial building worldwide. Brainbox uh, AI technology connects directly 
to a building HVAC to optimize its efficiency. This technology will revolutionize energy consumption in commercial buildings. We're talking about uh, what, I've saw, what I've seen so far, cutting energy consumption by up to 25% and reducing carbon footprint by more than 40%. That's huge, and that demonstrates the power of AI and information management to deliver energy efficiency solutions. And that, that's not all. Building equipped with Brainbox technology are interconnected. Cloud computing, thus creating clearly a virtual power plant. This power plant manages energy demand in the pool of interconnected buildings to distribute power intelligently and equitably, allowing, of course, flexibility and better management of the electric network. Decentralizing our electric network is one of the solutions to increase network resiliency lifespan and allow us to reach our climate objectives. In Quebec, we're stepping up efforts to achieve a low-carbon, climate-resilient and more prosperous economy. We have even committed to make Quebec the first carbon-neutral state in North America by 2050. Over the past year, I've met with a number of companies that like the brain box with ideas to optimize our networks and energy use. We need to listen to them. As a government official, we need to make room for them because they play a critical part of our energy transition. Brainbox is already at the forefront of the green transformation in the real estate sector, not only in Quebec, but also here in the UAE. Merci à toute l'équipe de Brainbox ici présente et les ceux qui sont pas ici pour votre apport remarquable au rayonnement de l'innovation de l'expertise québécoise sur cet important marché. Merci également aux équipes d'Investissement Québec qui ont accompagné l'entreprise dans ses nombreuses démarches à l'exportation. Investment Quebec is the partner of Quebec helping our companies to grow, enabling them to expand and diversify the export market outside Quebec. And as part of COP28, the team is leading, the, the Investment Quebec team, is leading a large Quebec delegation, which includes organizations ready to take action to help various nations succeed in their energy transition, just like Brainbox AI. I urge you, if not already, to find out what they have to offer and the advantages of Quebec to help this major global shift towards decarbonization. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Pierre. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we have another really special treat. So, this beautiful hotel and structure that we're in is in Al Habtur city. There are many buildings here. You should take a little bit of a walk maybe after this event and check it out. Lots of different interesting things to see. And we're saying this because in one of the buildings right behind this one is one of the first deployments of AI in the region. And we're very lucky here to have with us the Chief Operating Officer of Al Habtur Group, Mr. Yusuf Shelebi. So I'd like to invite him to join me on the stage and please give him a warm welcome for him to share a little bit about the story. My name is Yusuf Shalabi. I am the Chief Operating Officer, Technical and Engineering at Al Habtur Group. I didn't expect to be up here tonight, and I didn't think I was going to have to do a speech. <laughs> so, anyway, I thank uh, Brainbox for the invitation, and quite an impressive group of people that we met. Uh, my relationship with Brainbox is nearly two years old now. So I think I was one of the first sort of customers <laughs> for this. And Brainbox to me is an act of faith because if you're not into artificial intelligence and if you're not into 
uh, you know, these vague algorithms that are used to calculate uh, savings and stuff, you've got to take it on faith. And that's what we try to do. Uh, I mean, I'm lucky because our chairman, Mr. Khalaf al Haptour, has been, I don't know if we call it at the forefront, but he has been a very uh, eager from day one, from, the, from maybe 10 years ago, before it was fashionable, to uh, cut back on energy consumption. So in all our establishments, this hotel, everywhere else around the world, you know, we've got hotels in, in Europe, we've got hotels in the state, everywhere we've tried to institute all the evident and easier energy saving things. You know, we have water heaters driven by the sun, we have LED lights all over the place. We try to use, uh, we are the first people who have, uh, who are using elevators, we're re regenerating uh, electricity. Uh, we've uh, lately in the UAE, we've already installed in the last two years That's 8,500 kilowatts of solar power in various establishments of Al Habtur. So we're, we're into this. So when Brainbox came into the picture and, and the, was described what it can do, I accepted and we said we'll try. Uh, I accepted it for two reasons. First of all, the, the first guy who came to me was approachable and easy to talk to. And what convinced me more was that it was a Canadian company. And I said, <laughs> okay, I tried to, you know, push Canadian companies wherever I can. You know, we have them in La Perle, in the show, we have them wherever we can. So I said, okay, let's, let's give it a try. Anyway, we've, so we've asked them to install a system in one of the buildings behind us here. And there were initial setbacks. I think it was a learning curve for everybody. And, and for these systems, it's extremely difficult because you need to have a base. How are you, how are you, what are you measuring against? And it's extremely difficult to agree what is the base, what is the baseline? <laughs> Where are we going? So anyway, it took us a year, but the perseverance and the uh, hard work of the brain box team eventually succeeded in making it work. So I, I'm not here doing you know, they're not paying me to say, <laughs> to say this, but, <laughs> you know, I really appreciate <laughs> the effort they put into it. So now we said, all right, we've done a small job, and it's successful. So we're now venturing into a much larger job. I think uh, I've got confirmation from Mr. Muzaya that will probably be able to sign off maybe in the next week or so. Uh, so, <clears throat> what will I say? So that's, that, that's, you know, I wasn't really prepared to do a speech, but here I am. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, thank you, Brainbox, for what you've been doing.
Thank you for saying that, um, Yusuf, and thank you for sharing actually the, the, both the challenges and the rewards of the journey, right? So it's not always a straight line. I think anybody that's in the deployment and development of new technology knows this. And uh, it, it also takes a, uh, an early adopter and technology forward customer to support companies like us. So for that, we thank you. And I also want to highlight maybe Yusuf is being a little bit maybe understated, maybe a little bit humble. The little project is a 60-story building next door. So a little bit, you know, small. Um, that has the, the Brainbox technology deployed in it. And you can see here on the screen some of the results of our deployment. So once the AI technology was deployed, we've had a 38% reduction in the carbon emissions, 42% reduction in the electricity of the HVAC system, and then 24% reduction in the district cooling consumption of this building. So these are remarkable numbers, and I want to highlight one thing, that this is achieved without a single screw being turned in that building. This is just better algorithms, better math, better sequences of operation that optimize how the building should run without compromising the comfort in the building. So all this to say, thank you, Yusuf. Thank you, Al-Haptur Group, for this wonderful partnership that we have with you. We really appreciate it. And with that, we would now like to welcome another partner of ours. So now I'd like to welcome Mr. Ajay Malhotra to the stage. He's the CEO of DOTS. And he's going to speak to us about a deployment of Brainbox AI at the Dubai municipality. So please join me in welcoming him to the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it, it doesn't matter how many times I get up on the stage, I always have butterflies in my stomach. Um, it, it's great to be with everybody uh, this evening. Um, I want to thank Brainbox team for organizing this event, and I'm sure it's going to be a splendid evening. Uh, I'm AJ Malotra, CEO of Dots Tech Systems, and we're a partner of uh, Brainbox AI. My company, DOTS, uh, we specialize in uh, enabling IoT solutions and integration of systems, in particular health safety and sustainability solutions. During our, we, we established ourselves in 2016, and since then we've been very fortunate to work on a number of flagship government projects. And more recently, we have, with uh, Brainbox, worked with uh, with Dubai Municipality and uh, deployed their solution for building management application. I just want to share with you some of the, um, the observations and outcomes that we've been able to achieve together. They're very impressive, to be honest with you, in a very short span of time, so we're very proud of that. We started the project with basically deploying the solution and having it learn about the the assets in the building, it would train itself to be able to provide predictive thermal dynamics six hours ahead of time. After we did a runtime analysis after the learning stage was completed, we did find some very good results. We saw that there was a 42 reduction in average fan speed. We saw a 50% reduction in cooling coil valve modulation. The bottom line is that such results showed us that there's a very promising use for this AI technology in the right application. We see potential future benefits such as reduced greenhouse gas emissions. We see the potential for lower maintenance costs over time. And we also see the benefit of having an extended life cycle for the HVAC assets. So far, we have been able to see that using AI can be very transformative, especially in the application of building management. So looking forward, what we, uh, we will continue our work with Dubai Municipality and Brainbox and continue to do our runtime analysis and track the results from a measurement and verification uh, perspective. 
And as we see more and more results, we are we'll eager to share with you. But so far, so good. And we're very, very proud to be partners with Brainbox and, and take this all the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Malotra, for your thoughts on the journey so far. And we look forward to next steps with uh, the municipality. So now that we've taken a few moments to learn about um, success stories using AI in buildings, we'd like to also hear from leaders and visionaries who are looking into the future of what cities and construction can look like. And what role Brainbox AI can play in such uh, a journey. So to speak to this, please join me in welcoming Mr. Khaled Abbas, Chairman and CEO of the Administrative Capital for Urban Development of Egypt.
seeing is better than hearing. <laughs> uh, my name is Khaled Abbas. I'm the chairman and CEO for the new administrative capital in Egypt. Uh, you know, first of all, I would like uh, to thank Sam and his uh, Brainbox uh, uh, team for this invitation and allowing me to stand here. Uh, all what you see now, this is only starts 2017, only six years. Uh, starting from scratch up to what's happening now. The Egyptian government now is working from the new capital, the whole, the whole, the whole cabinet, starting from the prime minister and his uh, uh, ministers. And uh, as you see, as you see, the cabinet hall and and the senate and uh, the parliament is ready. Next next month, they're going to move there. We have a uh, presidential election next next week. After that, the new president, starting from next January, will move. So the whole country will be managed there. As an ECUD. This is uh, the first time in Egypt that a company can manage a city, and this is a big challenge. And we start planning for this city. Uh, it was a plan uh, on uh, three pillars, uh, to be sustainable, to be smart, and to be green. This is, this is uh, our target, and this is what we work for from the day one. As you see for the, in the old cities in Cairo, in Egypt and over Egypt, for each uh, citizen, only 50 centimeters from the greenery. In uh, the new capital, we're talking about more than 15 square meters per, per, per city. Uh, we're trying our best for the sustainability. Uh, for, uh, for the, as you see, for all uh, the water and, uh, recy and recycled water, and we are trying to use, uh, maximize our, uh, our resources. Um, when, we, when we talk with the Brainbox team and we see this uh, brilliant uh, solution, and this is, uh, we agreed together to start using the brain box in uh, some of our selected buildings as, uh, as to be more and more and, and applied in all uh, our phase one. This only phase one in the new capital is 40,000 Fadans, and I think this is one of the biggest smart cities in the world. And now we are doing our master plan for phase two and three, another 40 and or 80,000 Fadans. As I said, from day one, everything was, was planned to be sustainable. Even our distant cooling, we have one of the biggest distant cooling in Egypt, uh, 64,000 tons. Uh, it's 50% is uh, uh, working with the natural gas, uh, and this is also uh, to reduce the emissions of uh, CO2. Uh, while we're using, we're going to use the brain box, uh, I think there's the main, the main objective first to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, second, uh, to uh, maximize uh, energy efficiency. And third, as any company, uh, looking to minimize our, our expenses for the operation and maintenance. And this is, the, uh, this is the most important because as you see, there's a lot of uh, uh, expenses for, uh, to, maintain, to maintain on what you see. Uh, we have our own uh, data center and our own uh, uh, command center, which help us uh, to use the brain box uh, 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 outcome to, uh, to use it and to, to maximize uh, what we have from the data we collected. As I said, as a smart city, we, are, we have an fiber optics in all over the city for every unit in the city. So data is very important and uh, having brain box to join hand with us will help us a lot uh, uh, to maximize, as I said, uh, the energy efficiency, uh, to minimize uh, the, uh, the greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas. One last thing I just want to say that uh, even our uh, mass transportation, all it is electrical. We're going to announce within two months now uh, ta uh, taxi for the new capital. It will be all electric cars. We have uh, uh, charges everywhere, and uh, all the mass transportation will be there. This all goes on with the, with the UN, United Nations goals for, uh, uh, for sustainability, uh, what we hear all for COP28. And the last year in COP27, we start, we start some projects in, uh, in our city uh, uh, for, for these goals, and we are moving on. And I think that. Um, up to now, we have lots of work still to be done. 
I don't want to talk because, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm not uh, succeed to read from papers. This is my, uh, so once again, thank you, Sam and your team, and uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to start our uh, cooperation together and uh, waiting for the uh, uh, outcome. And thank you all for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Abbas. I have to say it's, it's quite exciting when we think about it. Just quickly, a quick comment before we transition. How often do we get to build a new city from scratch, right? And, and what would we have done differently? I'm sure we all ask ourselves this question once in a while. You know, if, if we had to rethink, for example, the city of London or the city of Rio de Janeiro, what would we have done differently? This is the opportunity, I think, that you're, you're sharing with us today to start from the very beginning with sustainability in mind. So we're looking forward to much more success. Thank you. And with that, I'd now like to transition us to call to the stage Mr. Locke Pham from the Embassy of Canada to speak to us and share some insights about the Canadian UAE relationship and how our two countries can work together towards accomplishing our mutual sustainability goals. Please join me in welcoming him. Bonsoir à tous. Good evening, Massa al -Kher. My name is Locke Pham. I'm the uh, head of the uh, commercial section at the Embassy of Canada in, um, in Abu Dhabi. I'm also the uh, deputy head of mission. I'm pleased to be here tonight with uh, Minister Fitzgibbon, Sam and his uh, Brainbox AI team, distinguished guests, and um, Hub Tour CEO Yusuf. Thank you for being here. Um, as a Canadian diplomat um, from Montreal, it's really a pleasure to talk to you today about Canada's leadership in energy efficiency and highlight, highlighting how a Quebec company from Montreal is making its mark in Dubai. You may not see a lot of similarities between Canada and the UAE. A few of my friends here call this place Reverse Canada because um, weather-wise in Canada, our worst months are from, um, sorry, our best months are from May to September. And the UAE's worst months are from May to September, hence it's Reverse Canada. Um, as a result, energy intensity is similar between Canada and the UAE. Our cold winters require indoor heat, just as the UAE's hot summers require indoor cooling. This is why we are both keen to address energy consumption and adopt new sustainable technologies. Canada is a leader in energy efficiency, we have more than 51,000 Canadian companies in the business of energy efficiency, running the full spectrum from building performance, energy efficiency, um, software and consulting services to smart technologies. Brainbox AI solutions are the perfect showcase of uh, how our homegrown technology can be used to effectively decarbonize buildings worldwide and more specifically in the UAE uh, in its endeavor towards its own decarbonization and sustainability efforts. Brainbox AI solution for the built environment powered by AI is a great example of technologies that will support the UAE's goal of achieving uh, net zero by um, 2015. In addition, it supports Dubai's demand side management strategy uh, 2030, which aims to reduce uh, electric uh, electricity demand by 30% by 2030. Very ambitious. So it is really impressive to see the impact that Brainbox AI has at uh, the, uh, the so many Al Habtour properties here uh, at Ashman School 
So we, ha we hope that more real estate organizations will move towards adopting AI as an energy reduction strategy in their buildings. We, as Canada, we welcome this partnership uh, between the two countries and look forward to welcoming more Quebec companies and Canadian companies um, to build more collaboration in this great country. So, merci à tous et bonne soirée. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Pham, and with that, to conclude tonight's presentation, we'd like to invite uh, Sam to come back and join us, our CEO, for some closing remarks. Sam? A more popular approach of brevity. Um, but I just, I just wanted to highlight uh, just how important it is in terms of the partners we work with. Um, I like to quote, you know, we are, we are using cutting edge AI technology, and I like to quote uh, Arthur C. Clarke who said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And the real problem is magic is hard. Um, there have been many fields attempting to apply AI. It's very novel, and it is a work in progress. And um, it's really important, uh, especially here, this two weeks at COP28, we are looking at many technologies being presented uh, that are applying in many different fields, everything from energy generation to large industrial, transportation, agriculture. And, and the challenge with this wave of new innovation is it's different from the internet wave of the early 2000s. It's different from mobile technology, the apps on our phones. In those cases, the technologies are fed to us through a computer or a phone or, or, or another electronic medium. In this wave of technology ahead of us, the big difference is we're taking it to physical assets, to industries that have been operating much the same way for decades. And so you end up with the challenges of, of meeting those physical assets and dealing with the daily realities of the people that own those assets and the people that run those assets. So the, these two worlds are coming together now, high technology and traditional assets. And, and so those, the, that situation creates challenges. And so for us, we want to take this opportunity to highlight the importance of these two worlds coming together and making it work. So um, Youssef mentioned before, it's been two years we're working together. Um, the application took time. We had to work through challenges. Uh, and it takes an organization like Al Hab Tour to do that and to be really forward thinking and to help us work together, work through the issues as, as we deploy for one of the early deployments. Um, far too often we see attempts to use new technology and that the first bump in the road, uh, it ends up stopping and backing up. And it takes that type of vision and perseverance, and, and I, I put the word perseverance in my, per, in my page, but you used it first, and I think it's super important. Okay, we are going to face this in buildings, we're going to face this in energy generation, transportation, logistics, etc. And the important part is if we're going to get there, if we're going to meet the promises that they're trying to negotiate at Expo City, that type of collaboration is, is essential. So we want to really highlight and thank um, Yusuf and his organization for being one of the early adopters. And we also want to thank uh, our current partners and future partners for that same level of collaboration. It's really important or we're just not going to get to the decarbonization goals we're going to need to get to. So I wanted to highlight that. Again, thank you, Yusuf, and the entire organization. Um, one more person I wanted to call on stage uh, now is Rafiq Muzaya. Where are you hiding? Okay. <laughs> and maybe Yusuf, if you want to join Rafiq, I think you deserve another round of applause as well. But uh, please, please come on stage. Rafiq is our uh, representative is our representative here in Dubai in the Middle East. And uh, I think it's super important to recognize the work he does for us and the collaboration he started with Al Habtour. And, uh, and uh, it's really important because even in the case of our own team member Rafiq, uh, with all the efforts made over the last couple of years, it would have been very easy to give up and go to an easier or more traditional sector 
And for months and months and months, Rafiq continues to uh, educate on the technology, promote its use in the region, and really push to make sure that these kind of efforts uh, uh, end up in a success in the next 5, 10, 20 years. And we hope that there are many more Rafiqs in the electricity generation, the energy grids, in the agricultural sector, cement, steel, everything. Because it's those kind of individuals, these two kind of individuals, that allow success when it comes to pushing new technology into traditional sectors. So let's give them a real big round of applause. Well, um, first of all, I want to welcome, I mean, I, I want to thank everyone for the effort that uh, you made tonight to be with us. It's really wonderful to be here and uh, given us the chance to share and, and, and to celebrate with us this amazing uh, uh, event and uh, lots of success and we're looking for a better future, a greener future, more sustainable future less emission, less GHG, <laughs> and uh, hope, uh, uh, hope for the best. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you, Sam. So uh, I encourage everyone at this point here, there was some very good uh, networking and sharing of ideas before this. The bar is still open. I think there's some more food. So please, everyone enjoy. Thank you for making the effort to coming out and enjoy the rest of COP. Thank you.